Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Please stand as the Chief of Air Force, Air Marshal Mel Hupfeld and Mrs Lou Hupfeld are received by the Director General of Air Force 2021, Air Commodore Andrew Elferson. Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Shane Clark, Bunurong Elder and traditional custodian, will now welcome us to country. Please be seated.
Good morning, everyone. My name's Shane Clark. I'm um, traditional custodian of the lands of where we are this morning, of the Bunurong people. It's an honour for myself and my nephew to be able to come here and do this welcome and smoking ceremony. I'd first of all like to pay my respects to my elders, both past and present. And also we got other elders here with us today, Aunty Deb, and I'd like to acknowledge all our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters and acknowledge, always acknowledge our service men and women for the great sacrifice and the work they're doing. That, uh, so we're just going to do a welcome this morning and it's really great to have that smoking ceremony. It's the first time I've been here to be able to do this on a very special day. Uh, we was here last night to do the do it for the for the light. It's a great night and a great great bunch of people. And um, I'd also like to acknowledge Mel and Lou and and for the effort yeah, to come to be a part of a very special commemoration and for the, having them invite us to be a part of this day. That uh, So I'll just say a few words so we can get on with the proceedings. That um, woman Jinka, Oriyaya wants along Bunurong. And thus welcome all our friends to the lands of the Bunurong. Let's walk together and learn together. And just remember where we tread our feet. Tread lightly. Because underneath our feet, our history sleeps. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Uncle Shane, for welcoming us to Bunurong Country and for the smoking ceremony that will continue to burn throughout the event. It is important to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander contribution within Air Force and continue on a journey of understanding through connection, people, place, history, culture, spirit and belonging. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples understand and share spiritual connections and responsibility to the land, waterways and share responsibility to care for and serve country. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please stand as the Catafalque Party takes its position on the memorial, standing in sentinel to one of those who have given their lives for Australia as members of the Royal Australian Air Force over the past 100 years. Party. Hold! Cut off our party. Outwards. Turn. Cut off our party. Rest on arms. Please be seated. Principal Air Chaplain Mark Willis will now introduce the memorial followed by the aviator's prayer. Principal Air Chaplain Willis. 
We have erected this uh, Air Force Centenary Memorial and have come here today to dedicate it. Not only in memory of the 3,143 brave souls whose resting place is known only to God, not only for the 11,191 who displayed great deeds and who paid the ultimate sacrifice, and not only for the more than 350,000 who have served their nation in blue, but rather we dedicate it as a memorial to honour all aviators who have and are and who will serve in Australia's Air Force. Who are these people to whom this memorial is dedicated? They are aviators. They are ground crew, support crew, air crew, mission crew, commanders and recruits and many levels in between. But at home, they have other names. They are mum, dad, son, daughter, brother, sister, partner, lover. They are men, women, old, young, born here, chose to live here rich, poor, religious, spiritual. They are us. They are Australians. They are our aviators. This memorial stands as a permanent sentinel of service, courage and sacrifice and a sombre reminder to all who pass by of the need to devise better means of resolving and settling international disputes other than by the wanton, wanton destruction of a nation's most precious resource, its sons and daughters. In friendship, in love for our neighbour and in service to one another, we pledge to never forget the duty of service and personal sacrifice rendered by so many in the Royal Australian Air Force. We will remember them and in their name we give ourselves to this noble cause. Let me read the Aviator's Prayer. Lord of heavens and earth, who gives breath and life, who formed the canopy of stars above, whose command is over all and whose steadfast love will never fail, let us always be aware of your presence and obedient to your will. Guide us, protect us and help us to soar on eagles' wings as we defend the skies above our country and all that we hold dear. Let our uniform as aviators of Australia be a daily reminder of our responsibility to our nation when we doubt, steady our faith, when we are tempted Make us strong to resist. When we miss the mark, give us the courage to try again. May we be enriched with the moral fibre required for duty and may you ensure that we will return to our loved ones at day's end. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. The Chief of Air Force will now address us as we mark the end of our 100th year of service to Australia. As our second century dawns, we are delivering air and space power for the joint force in peace and in conflict, continuing our proud history for which so many have given so much over the past century. This, the spiritual and historic home of the Air Force, the place where 100 years ago the Australian Air Force started and where today this memorial pays respect to all who have worn the Air Force uniform since then. The Centenary Memorial, our legacy, will bring peace and a place of silent solitude to past and current generations, inspiring future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief of Air Force Air Marshal Mel Hupfeld with his Centenary Address.
I acknowledge the Bunurong people from the Kulin Nation, traditional custodians on, on the, of the land on which we meet today, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and Uncle Shane, thank you so much for such a warm welcome to this wonderful country. I, expend, I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be present with us here today. Now, I was here on the flat, dusty ground of Point Cook in 1921, and as for today, sometimes a bit cold and windy, and it was here that the Royal Australian Air Force was born. It was here that our first Air Force members developed a reputation for bravery, innovation, dedication to duty, and succeeding against the odds, building on the traditions that came from the Australian Flying Corps. And now, a century on, it is fitting that we are here to honour the service and sacrifice of generations of Australians who have worn the Air Force uniform across this great country and across the world. The numbers that we know so well that we should always repeat so that we understand what we as an Air Force contribute and indeed what it costs. More than 350,000 Australians have served in the Air Force since 1921. As we know, 11,191 of those have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country and the freedoms that we enjoy today. As we commemorate all who have served since our formation almost 101 years ago now, I have the honour to recognise two Air Force veterans who will join us later today, and one of whom shares our birth year. I acknowledge Mrs Barbara Parsons, who served in the Royal Australian Air Force Nursing Service, and who I will present a Royal Australian Air Force centen uh, Centenarian Certificate a little later today. And her husband, Mr Cecil Boz Parsons, DFC, who served in Bomber Command and in the Pacific. He turned, I think he's about 103 years old now. We thank them for joining us today and they, uh, I'm anticipating they'll join us for lunch to help us mark this solemn and absolutely most significant occasion. This memorial will stand here at a place that has such rich Air Force heritage, certainly for another, another century or longer. It will serve as a reflection that our people have achieved in the first hundred years in times of conflict and peace and what our future generations of Air Force aviators will achieve. This memorial has been designed to be inclusive so every Air Force member, our veterans and their families, can connect with it. The memorial includes officer and enlisted rank insignia and it's representative of all employment groups within Air Force throughout the ages. Our aviators serving today have been born in over 100 different countries. This memorial represents every one of them in today's culturally diverse Air Force. On special occasions, the spotlight that some of you got to see last night will point upwards from the memorial, looking forever skyward, honouring the 3,143 members who have no known grave. The centenary theme, then, now, always, is immortalised for future generations of aviators on the centrepiece of this memorial. There are two factors which have defined our Air Force in its first century and I believe will do so forever. The extraordinary quality of our people and our ability to continually adapt to changing circumstances and ever advancing technology. This memorial stands as a tribute to the foremost element of our success. Our people, their resilience, strength and their humanity. I acknowledge the work of our Air Force 2021 branch who coordinated, who coordinated this project as a lasting legacy of our centenary working with the Lodge Brothers Stonemasons, with our Air Force History and Heritage Branch, and with the Defence Security and Estate Group. 
And I think, as we know, the Lodge brothers built the Australian Flying Corps Memorial, which is just over the other side of the parade ground here, a memorial that was dedicated in 1938. The dedication of this memorial marks the conclusion of our Air Force Centenary Program. Our centenary has been a special opportunity to remember our previous generations on whose shoulders we stand today. The centenary has been a time for Air Force to tell some of the remarkable stories of our first 100 years and also to consider our continued evolution into the future. As we operate in a multi-domain environment as part of a joint force in a certainly uh, more contested and complicated world. It's been an enormous privilege for me as the Chief to be here to mark our Air Force's 100 years of service. Much will change in the next century. But I, leave, but I believe 100 years from now, future Air Force generations will look and visit this memorial. They'll feel pride in the service and reflect on 200 years of Air Force history and, of course, of the achievements and, and further sacrifices. The centenary uh, theme inscribed on the memorial will continue to resonate. Our commitment to Australia and Australians is enduring. Then, now, always. Thank you, sir. Chaplain Willis will momentarily dedicate the Air Force Memorial. Warrant Officer of the Air Force, would you please join the Chief for the unveiling of the memorial plaques. The Chief and Warrant Officer of the Air Force will move to the plaques, conduct the unveiling, and Principal Air Chaplain Willis will then dedicate this Royal Australian Air Force Centenary Memorial. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Air Force and Warrant Officer of the Air Force will now unveil the memorial plaques. Today we dedicate this memorial to the aviators, the brave sons and daughters of our nation who have served in the Royal Australian Air Force this past 100 years. May this place always be a reminder to us of the sacrifice, commitment and courage shown by the men and women who have pulled on the blue uniform. In so doing, they have said to themselves, their families and their nation, I am willing to do all that it takes to defend our freedom, even to the point of death. As the searchlight of this memorial points to the stars, may we be grateful for those who came home. May we acknowledge those who serve today and may we never forget those who lie in foreign soil or in the depths of the sea with no known resting place. I so dedicate this memorial in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, leading aircraft woman, Chloe Brewer-Jones. Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> Wing Commander Marianne Whiting will now reflect on the sacrifices of the men and women of the Royal Australian Air Force since its inception almost 101 years ago. Today we gather at this centenary memorial to honour and remember the men and women of the Royal Australian Air Force whose service in times of war, peace and natural disaster helped shape this nation. Over the past 100 years, Australians have volunteered to join the Air Force to serve this nation and its people. They include the descendants of the original custodians of this land. Those born in Australia, the descendants of many nations, and those born overseas who chose to make this country and this Air Force theirs and ours. Their story will always be too complex and too large to fit neatly into one reflection. It is our collective story that holds up our history and cements our heritage into the fabric of Australia's identity as a nation. Thousands of personal stories connect to that first training flight by Lieutenant George Mertz on August 18, 1914, in these skies above Point Cook. Supported as he was by instructors and a range of tradesmen, including welders, blacksmiths, engine fitters and electricians. That single flight forms into one great story of who we are, what we do and who we serve. The vastness of our story has its beginnings with the contribution of those who were leaders in our formative years for it is they who first understood that Australia's successful application of air power relied on the quality of its people. Air crew supported by highly competent, mission-oriented ground crew. We do not mythologise our story. We know the heritage we have left behind. It has its origins in the actions of ordinary men and women many of whom have sacrificed much to build and sustain that heritage, and who by their deeds forged the history of military aviation across our vast nation and in campaigns across the world. Some of those deeds are told in stories often remembered, stories of individual or collective duty, courage and sacrifice. And so it is that we, we remember with pride and gratitude those men and those women who gave their lives in the service of this nation. We honour especially those Air Force personnel still missing in action and who have no known grave. We remember with pride, gratitude and sympathy the men and women whose spirits were crushed by the suffering through which they passed and saw others pass. We remember with pride prisoners of war who bravely defied their captors. We remember with pride and gratitude the doctors, nurses, medics and all volunteers who served and continue to serve our sick, wounded and exhausted personnel. We remember with pride and gratitude our chaplains who bring spiritual comfort and consolation in times of sickness, injury, fear and death. Many individual stories remain unknown or known only to a few, told by a family member who spoke of being part of a great adventure, of something bigger and more important than their singular self. Many stories, like those of our Indigenous personnel, are gradually being discovered. For many reasons, much of our recent story remains largely untold. If the deeds of today's Air Force personnel are to be remembered and honoured, it is important their individual stories are collected so they do not become submerged in the complexity of modern operations. A century of service has come to a close. 
we face with confidence the, be the, the beginning of a new century with all the promise that it holds. The mixture of service and sacrifice which it now keeps hidden from our eyes. The Air Force will face new challenges delivering air and space power during a time when the global, political and economic balance of power is shifting. If we are to project air and space power to protect Australia, we must know our story and understand our history, our people and our land. Our next generation of Air Force personnel will need to study and reflect on the issues which may confront us as a nation and globally. Our national purpose, which derives from our values, are sometimes intangible and overlapping, notwithstanding our national values are best appreciated by a study of our history. So I call on the next generation to do that, to study our history, particularly the history of our Aboriginal Australian and Torres Strait Islander peoples, their language and culture, for it is they who have nurtured and cared for this land for thousands of years. I call on our Indigenous youth to examine global systems from an Indigenous knowledge perspective. Our alliances also need to be based on clear mutual interest and common values. We need to study those nations to which we have been traditionally aligned as much as those nations who hold different national values, as we may need to make treaties, alliances or formal commitments for mutual action or benefit. Our people will need to be culturally and linguistically diverse. They will need skills and experience to enhance our thinking, to deepen defence relationships, to strengthen engagement and generate ideas. This centenary memorial stands as a reminder to honour all those who have served and continue to serve in the Royal Australian Air Force. It also stands as a symbol of our resolve to build on our proud history and heritage. In contemplating what may be ahead, let us signal our determination to always honour those who gave their lives in service, to never cease looking for our, miss our missing and to help their families for whom the story never ends. Our enduring values and qualities then and now demonstrate we have something to offer a world badly strained by recent events and that the Australian ideal of a fair go for all remains paramount. We commend our heritage to those who currently serve and to those who will follow. The young men and young women of, of this nation who, like their forebears, will join the Royal Australian Air Force to serve their country to honour the sacrifice of the past and to commit to a better future for Australia and all nations. As we did then, as we do now, as we will always. Wing Commander Mary Ann Whiting, thank you. Leading aircraft woman Angelina Pan uh, Francis joins us now to express our commitment to remember. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a commemoration of 100 years dedication to the defence of Australia, its values and its people. Today we reflect on the honour, sacrifice and service of the Air Force personnel who have served over the last 100 years. We will remember them and serve in a way that honours their service and traditions. Qualities such as camaraderie Courage and self-sacrifice are demonstrated without fight, fail by Australian Air Force men and women from one generation to the next. We welcome all those who come to serve as the Air Force evolves into the future. Our next 100 years will see an evolution of our Air Force culture to hold us strong in the face of adversity. We will operate in a new era of rapidly advanced, advancing technology, stronger team mindsets, as well as greater collaboration and integration with Navy, Army and our foreign military partners. We will operate more broadly as part of one team. 
I'm enthusiastic about the Plan Jericho Disruptive Innovations Bottom-Up Initiative, known as Edgy Air Force. It uplifts, upskills and challenges all ranks to creative design and rapidly prototype next generation solutions to today's problems. Its significant workforce innovations will introduce next generation platforms into service. There has been so much to be proud of in Air Force's first century, and as an organisation, we have an exciting future. For today, we reflect on the achievements of our Air Force personnel who have served, revel in the capability excellence of our present, and look forward with imaginings and anticipation to our bright future. We are aviators, and in service to our nation, we conduct ourselves with courage, respect and integrity in pursuit of excellence, then, now, always. Thank you so much, Angelina. Our bagpiper will play a lament while wreaths of commemoration are laid at the memorial. The Chief of Air Force, Air Marshal Mel Hupfeld and Mrs Hupfeld will lead by laying the wreath for the Royal Australian Air Force. Warrant Officer of the Air Force, Fee Grasby. Air Force Aboriginal Elder, Auntie Deb Booker and Uncle Shane Clark. Representing the Chief of Navy, Commodore Greg York. Representing Army, Major Mark Prideau. Dean of the Defence Attaches, Colonel Salvatore Trinconi. Then, now, always. Then, Mr Carl Schiller, representing the Air Force Association. Now, CO 21 Squadron, Wing Commander Caroline Godfrey.
always Air Force cadets, Patrick Newen. Air Commodore Andrew Elferson, Director General of Air Force 2021, and Ms Sandra Finney, Director Air Force Events, on behalf of the Air Force 2021 and Air Force Events teams. And I invite anyone else who would like to lay a wreath to now come forward. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the Warrant Officer of the Air Force, Fee Grasby, leads us in the Ode of Remembrance. Cut off party, a turn. Come on. You are invited to respond in agreement in the closing of the Ode. Please then remain standing as immediately following the Ode, the last post will be sounded by the bugler from the Air Force Band and the last post will be followed by one minute silence. Members are reminded to salute during the last post and gentlemen are requested to remove their hats. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. Lest we forget. Get up our party, the last post. Preset arms. <laughs>
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the Air Force Band plays the Australian National Anthem. In the interest of COVID safety measures, please refrain from singing. Members are reminded to salute during the anthem and gentlemen are requested to remove their hats. Cut off party, general salute. Peace and arms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the catafalk party dismounts. Catafalk party! Inward, turn. Catafalk party, by the left. Quick! Principal Air Chaplain James Cox and our new Director General Chaplaincy will lead us in the closing blessing. Please be seated. As we prepare to leave this centenary memorial, this sacred place that celebrates our service then, now and always, may we be inspired to offer up our lives in the service of others for the cause of justice, freedom and peace. May our inspiration come from the love, compassion and grace of the eternal God who sustains all of life, then, now and always. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. In two minutes' time. <laughs> this is air traffic control up here as well. I will ask you to look skywards as the roulettes will conduct the final fly past of the dedication ceremony. And I'd like to introduce you to Roulette 7 Flight Lieutenant Ben Price, who will now describe the roulettes display for us. Ben, are you here? Flight Lieutenant Ben Price, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, good morning. My name is Flight Lieutenant Ben Price, and in 2022, I am Roulette 7. Today, we will be viewing the four ship special venue display. Unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, you will notice that only four of the six roulettes will be present for today's display. 
we wish, our, we wish the best to the Stankovicius family. Throughout the display, the team will demonstrate a number of different formations and manoeuvres. Formation members hold their position using visual cues only. There are no autopilots, just highly refined hand-eye coordination to maintain position roughly three metres apart. The team has now completed their warm-up and in a second I'll point your eyes to the north as the roulettes fly overhead. the Royal Australian Air Force roulettes. Throughout the display today, you'll notice that roulettes two, three, and four will use a mixture of power, bank, and airspeed to maintain position. They have full trust in roulette leader, squadron leader Mark Karitz, that he will be stable and as to plan. Out to the right now, the team will continue their right turn to fly past the crowd in box formation. In 2022, the Roulette team is led by Squadron Leader Mark Karitz. Roulette 2 is Flight Lieutenant Ben Ness. Roulette 3, Flight Lieutenant Trent Sherman. Roulette 4, Flight Lieutenant Ben Hepworth. The two members not here for today's display is Roulette 5, Flight Lieutenant Dan Barclay, and Roulette 6, Flight Lieutenant Nathan Stankovicious. Roulette 1 will now position the team for an offset loop as they track directly at the crowd with over 500 kilometres of closure before pulling up into a 4G loop. The team will now continue their steep turn to the left to demonstrate the turning capability of the PC-21. The smoke you see coming from the aircraft today is a mixture of fuel and mineral oil. It's generated by the pods on the wings. Not only is it impressive for the, the display, but it also improves safety by helping pilots avoid each other's wake turbulence and help maintain position. As the team manoeuvre out to the right, they'll now position for what's known as leader's benefit. But in today's case, with just the four ship of aircraft, it will be the swift fly past. Roulettes two through to four will fly side by side directly behind roulette one.
The Rollouts fly the Pilatus PC-21, which is a Swiss-designed turboprop aircraft. It is powered by a PT-6 engine, producing up to 1,600 sh shaft horsepower and capable of speeds up to 370 knots or 685 kilometres an hour. In 2022, the team is compri comprised of pilots with previous experience on the C-130 Hercules, the C-17 Globemaster, FA-18 Hornet, P-3 Orion and the B-350 King Air. The Roulettes are based out of Central Flying School in Victoria at RAF Base East Sale. Out to your left now, the team will position for a teeter box loop. Watch closely as the formation changes position throughout the looping manoeuvre. Rule at one squadron leader Mark Kritz is responsible for the timing, positioning and sequence of events. Mark is a Victorian having grown up in Vermont South. Mark flew C-130 Hercules prior to his time as an instructor on the PC-9 and now PC-21. He has over three and a half thousand hours of military flying and this is his sixth season in the Roulettes. Roulette two, Flight Lieutenant Ben Neck Ness grew up in Canberra. He graduated pilot's course in 2004 before going on to fly the C-130 and C-17. He conducted some of his pilot training in the United States and was involved in the introduction of the C-17 into RAF service. Ben has instructed on the C-17, the PC-9 and now the PC-21. This is his first season in the Roulettes. Eyes back to the right, you'll notice that Roulette 1 will be flying inverted whilst Roulette 4 performs a corkscrew manoeuvre around the remaining members of the team. Performing the corkscrew today was Roulette 4, Flight Lieutenant Ben Hepworth, who grew up in Tasmania. He began flying at just 16 years of age. He graduated pilot's course in 2011 and was posted to 10 Squadron flying the P-3 Orion. He's been involved in many international engagements, operation, operations and exercises, including the search for MH370 off the West Australian coast in 2014. The final member of today's performance is Roulette 3, Flight Lieutenant Trent Sherman. He grew up in Perth and was a keen ba baseballer before joining ADFA. Following ADFA, he graduated pilot's course in 2004. He went on to fly and instruct the FA-18 Hornet. This is Trent's first season with the Roulettes and he has over 6,500 hours flying experience. Squadron Leader Carrots has now positioned the team for the T-Fly Past. The PC-21 is capable of up to 8G, or eight times the force of gravity. To put this in perspective, you may experience three to four G on a roller coaster. Some of the maneuvers today you'll see will be up to six G. G suits and training allow our bodies to sustain these increased forces. When pilots pull G, air bladders in these G suits inflate, squeezing the legs and abdomen. To help, this is to help the pilots maintain consciousness by keeping blood in the chest and head. It is the same type of suit that is worn in fast jet aircraft. From the right now, roulette rollbacks. Whilst these PC-21s are used today in this impressive display, tomorrow they could be back in sale, used for 
it, uh, used for pilot training at RAF Base East Sail. The PC-21 is the primary training aircraft for tra trainee pilots in the Australian Defence Force. It's quite impressive to think that someone that has never flown an aircraft before could step into a PC-21 for their first ever flight. As the formation continues their right-hand turn, they will position for a barrel roll to the right and then a crowd fly past. The team will now position for the final manoeuvre of today's show. As roulettes, our role is to bring the military to the public eye and showcase the professionalism, dedication and skill of all men and women of the Australian Defence Force. We sincerely hope you have enjoyed today's display. It's been an absolute honour and privilege to be flying here over Point Cook on this historic day. To close out proceedings, Squadron Leader Mark Kuritz, Rule at One, will lead the team through a loop before finishing with a four ship bomb burst. On behalf of the Roulettes, thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed the show. And Roulette 7, Flight Lieutenant Ben Price, thank you for taking us into the cockpit of the Roulettes on this very special day. Thanks, Ben. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this dedication. Thank you on behalf of everyone for attending this final event of our centenary year, a year which has been the 100th commemoration of the birth of the finest Air Force in the world the Royal Australian Air Force, in this the most sacred place for the Royal Australian Air Force, our birthplace. As you move from here today, may the spirit of service, courage, respect, integrity and excellence guide you as it has guided us for 100 years. The legacy of Sir Richard Williams and every one of our predecessors is evident from the respect afforded us by Australians everywhere. For that, of course, we are eternally grateful to the 350,000 of our peers who serve and who have served in uniform of the Royal Australian Air Force. Thank you so much for today. Good afternoon. <laughs>